Hey, what's up? It's Valley here, and we're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. What's up, guys? Rob here, Front Row Live Entertainment. I am finally hanging out with Valley. I've been wanting to talk to you guys because your music is incredible. So, first of all, thanks. thank you for hanging out with me today. I know you guys are super busy with tour. It's all good. But uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having us. This is awesome. We've definitely watched your interviews before. <laughs> I'm insane. now realizing. So That is insane. Um, so, it's very cool. That is insane. Well, let's dive in and talk about uh, this tour that's happening right now, Lost in Translation Tour. Mm -hmm. Um how first of all congrats that like how many sold out shows we've seen on this mm -hmm. um how does that kind of impact the the vibe on on your shows when you see you know you you come on 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 stage and you see like these like full blown like sold out shows yeah this tour specifically is really interesting cuz we've only done like one more headline like we did a headline like a year ago across mm -hmm. America and that was our first ever like headline across America. Cause we've been doing supports for a long time, supporting our friends and stuff like that. Yeah. This is the first tour, the first, like the first tour we kind of did, um, we kind of just like didn't know what to expect and, and that kind of sold out and it was insane. And they were like, you know, smaller clubs across America, but these venues are truly insane because they're venues that we've supported like some of our like dearest friends in, um, so to like walk into a room and fill it, um, because of our music is insane yeah because um, we're so used to stepping on these stages supporting our friends and being like okay let's try to win some people over let's have a good time but like to be back in the exact same venues and like standing on the stage at Loden, being like we're filling this room tonight <laughs> is is a crazy feeling um never gets old do you feel like you finally get to be yourself on stage because now you don't have to try and like yeah sell your i, I don't know if sell yourself is the right word but no, like try yeah. and kind of gain that audience as no, well no for sure yeah i think so i think support tours are always a little bit different because you have 30 minutes um to win people over and mm. and not even win people over but like i don't know you only get like one first impression a lot of the time so it's like there's a little bit more pressure, yeah. but this, uh, this tour, you know, having your own show, this kind of feels like walking to your own house party. It's like, okay, <laughs> like, you know, we know what we're doing here. Um, so it, it, it definitely feels a little different in a good way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Now this, this tour is deemed or titled because of this upcoming sophomore album. Yeah. Um, and you guys are testing out like new material on, mm -hmm. on this tour. How has that been? Like, have you guys performed some of these songs and we're like, shit, we need to like re-record something or maybe yeah. like you got new ideas just Definitely. because of the experience. I think the songs develop a lot live. I think we're, where are like bread and butter, we always joke is like live because in the studio we try to, we produce a lot of everything and mm. we try to keep everything pretty, um, pretty song focused because we're songwriters at heart. We love to produce. We're yeah. obsessed with production, but um, we're always like we're on this new wave of like letting the production get out of the way of the song, at least with this album. And um, but live is where we get to go crazy. Live is like there's no rules. So yeah. a lot of the time, you know, songs off this record, when you hear them live, it's like, you know, they're very much beefed up. We've added, you know, extra elements nice. and like extent extended certain sections just to kind of, I don't know, give people a little bit of a different taste because we always enjoyed that going to shows growing up and like songs having a little bit of a different um, kind of flair to them always kind of like got you excited in the crowd. So, um, that's been a big focus on this tour, which is really fun. Yeah. But, um, what was the question again? Sorry. You answered I, it. Oh, I answered it. Okay. <laughs> I was like, did it. I answer the question? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Alex, what about for you? Like, as far as like playing bass on, on stage and like going back into the recording studio, how do you feel that you've kind of changed like your way of even like recording, uh, your bass? That's a great question. Um, well, it's definitely different in the studio. You know, you've got like a bunch of tries, as many tries as you want. But I do think that we we definitely have been trying to focus more on the live element of everything and of the like in the moment kind of like, even if there was that little tiny maybe mess up that you did, it still felt like human and live. And like we've we've been leaving a lot more of of that. You're uh, take out. I feel like yeah. it's like we're doing the verse. It's like I want to get the verse in its entirety yeah which i appreciate about you we've we've Very. exactly we've been trying to do a lot more of that like leaving an entire section of a take and instead of uh maybe cutting stuff up a bunch and doing like you know like every individual part um 
which, you know, everybody is guilty of doing <laughs> for sure in, in production and stuff. But so, yeah, we've we've definitely incorporated incorporated some live uh, focus, I guess, into mm. uh, some of our studio recording. Yeah, for sure. And if, if you guys want to answer for for Kara, like um, as far as the drums go, like how has that dynamic kind of changed uh, from live to recording? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm saving my uh, my vocal for for this interview and the performance <laughs> later today. But um, yeah, I think it's just kind of like, and even our title track, Lost in Translation. There's like mm. some shots that we just like we never even like talked about doing them, but the do no like those things. I'm like, oh, they're not in the recording. I'm like, this is so lame. Like <laughs> now, when I listen to the recording, I'm like why didn't we do that like yeah. that's so obvious but when you're playing it live you just kind of like naturally like you know being musicians first like you just kind of like do these things and then they come together and you're like this is so obvious we should have done this in the recording so yeah kind of just like stuff like that because like i know in like the 70s like when you're a band or like even like just like 90s pre like you rehearse the song in the studio mm -hmm. so that you can record it in full, like before digital yeah. recording was really a thing. So like, but just with like the way music goes now, like you need to pump music yeah. out. It's like, you don't really have time to <laughs> go in the studio and rehearse what you're going to record for three weeks. Like you just don't have the time. So you do it as you go. And then you just have to accept the fact that there will, there will probably be things you realize later that it's like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to live with that OCD moment of just like <laughs> not doing that in the recording, but it's all good. That's why you do live, you yeah. know, that's your opportunity. So, but I also feel like that has like a beautiful moment to it because mm -hmm. then you get these vulnerable moments that if you try and do it a mul like multiple takes, it's just not going to hit the same. Um, in, in saying that talk to me about like the the writing process of this album just because i feel like you're you're taking us through this roller coaster of emotions from whether it's a relationship or just 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 like things going on in your life where it's like happy moments sad moments like crazy moments like that writing process for you rob like how does that really kickstart for you are you in the moment like going through those experiences or are these experiences that you went through in the past that yeah. now you feel comfortable talking about so interesting i mean we rewrite a lot of everything together like mm -hmm. this album was very much like actually this album started in a weird way like we we started with a pretty blank canvas and we were like we knew it was like time for a sophomore album because we we did we put out our first album maybe which is like 18 19 years old like you have your whole life to write those songs yeah. it's like the classic trope of a first album and then you know th we kind of like had a little bit of success and we felt a little bit of pressure and then we're like okay let's just take time to experiment now so we put out two EPs over the just like experimented a bunch um and just kind of like around we we're just like what yeah what could Valley like sound like and just like what, how could we push ourselves in different ways? And then that kind of happened and that ended up being a really beautiful experience, which like led us to here. And, you know, sophomore albums are scary. Everyone like always talks about the second <laughs> album slump, but uh, I, we definitely felt it at the beginning a little bit. And then we kind of regrouped and like figured out what we wanted to do. And I think that the, the biggest thing that we talked about together was like, we want to, make a record that feels classic mm. it feels like it could age well um with with still dipping our toes into like new territory and things we haven't done before so that's kind of where we landed and a lot of the this album we kind of worked around the world on like we were touring so much so we, you know there's things we did in korea there's things we did wow. um you know just traveling wherever we could on, in a hotel and and then we finally took some time to like come out here we got this like a frame house in beachwood canyon um we invited all our friends to this house and we just like made like three songs a day we set up like three That's studios it. um this place hasn't been touched since like the 60s it had this like really nice like juju you know it just had like a vibe and um yeah we filmed a little like mini doc about it and which will probably be coming out eventually but yeah we really like hunkered down and like just figured out i think a lot uh, in that house of like what the record should be yeah. Um, and yeah it was just like a lot of collaboration we worked with a lot of like our friends that are songwriters but like it, I don't know it felt like we were just like writing with our with our friends and, and I don't know it felt really good and like open. they helped us open up a lot of new doors of just like what how far we can like bend um, I don't know the, in, the intent of this record mm. um, and it, I think we landed with something that feels pretty classic like a lot of the 
a lot of the production, like I said, is like kind of getting out of the way of the song. We were really focused on like the idea of what the song is trying to say and really staying out of the way of that. Um, but emotionally, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff we're unpacking from years ago. There's a lot of stuff that we're unpacking about the future. There's a lot of stuff we're unpacking about, you know, a dream or a nightmare we had that day. <laughs> like, it's like, we kind of write like that. We're, we're always like pulling from, from, you know, being a songwriter is hilarious. Cause like you have to kind of like put a lifetime in three minutes. And then also <laughs> you have to like dig up trauma every day. Yeah. Like you literally have to sit and like show up in a room and be like, okay, well this happened two years ago and it kind of sucks or like you know what i mean like it's like it's that that's what songwriting is you're like literally like mining for words but also like emotionally unwrapping trauma and uh and also like it, it, with with humans like in a room where you have to like connect with people yeah. it's like it's a lot it's fun but um <laughs> it's a journey <laughs> yeah. and I've, I've noticed that on this album um you have a couple producers as well as you guys yeah like self-producing the record mm -hmm. um what was it about these like producers and and what was the reason for not sticking to just one producer and wanting to kind of dabble with different types of producer this is because going back to what you said earlier this was pretty much created around the world yeah i mean it's definitely it comes down to i think you know sometimes i mean we've been self-producing for so long mm -hmm. it's like you know it's just bringing in new flavor it's like when you've eaten the same dish a million times it's like you probably want to try something else and <laughs> i think that's just what it is and it's like um you know the producers on this project are people that we've looked up to forever that we're so grateful to call friends now but it's like jorgen odegaard who uh we've done a few songs with and, you know and he's one of, he's one of those people like, that came into our lives and like blew our minds because yeah. like he just approaches music in a way that we've never approached music and he's taught us so much about production and um you know just his drum work and his melodic work and his mm. he pushed us to really like um simplify our ideas in the sense of like don't try to be more misunderstood than you have to be like yeah. say it as it is say what you're feeling um you know david pramick we worked with who's amazing peter fenn um what other Agron. Agron, yeah like it's just people that like I don't know, just felt really connected to the music and it, it, it felt very effortless. Like they, they wanted to be involved and yeah. it, we felt that kind of passion and love. So it felt very really easy. It wasn't like as much of a, sometimes with producers and stuff, it's very like, do you want to jump on the project? And it gets very like um, sterile and very yeah. like um, office-y. I don't know, but yeah. this it's all felt, all yeah, sudden, like, but this yeah. felt very natural. We just like end up writing a bunch of songs together and like, oh, do you want to jump on the track and work on the drums or do you want to like go in on this and we were so down because it just like opened up a whole new palette of sounds um and like mickey's usually on the laptop but i feel like for you too you needed like i feel like you needed like a little bit of a i was gonna say it's like really nice to start um songs with other producers mm -hmm. as like a band where like you you produce a lot of your stuff because you get to focus just on the songwriting and like the vibes and the direction and everything and and then they bring like um again like rob said like a different flavor so like for example when we were working with like agrin um he's like a swedish producer he's awesome he moved to la and we randomly had a session with him set up by like i think management or publishing or something we had never met him before but like in he every song we've done with him is on the record because yeah. he just yeah. like nails the vibe and it's not necessarily a vibe we would have started but then like to make sure that it has like the dna of valley we took mm. those demos home we produced them out we sent them back to him. He did more production. We kind of like collaborated from there. Um, but like, yeah, I think I think in those rooms, like I don't have to be on the laptop, like doing all the like production and technical stuff. But then we still like in the room while we're like designing the song, mm -hmm. being the artists that are thinking about like, what do we have to express today? You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of me being like, this drum beat is dope. Like, like and it, yeah, yeah, you can be more of the artist in the room. And then we get to take it home. We get the demo, we get the session. And then like the four of us sit together and we produce out the song or yeah. do it on an airplane. Like, you know, like it's, it's all over the place. And it's like sort of the DNA of like our life, you know, coming into the song, just like whether we're traveling or we're at home producing the record together or we're on a trip doing it with other people. It's sort of just like, an amalgamation of like everything we're doing all into the song. So you guys were already kind of nervous about this album just because it's your soft, your sophomore album, like you mentioned. Yeah. And there's also 15 tracks on this, on this record. Yeah. So like, how do you feel, uh, like going back to you, Mickey, um, how do you feel that you allowed yourself to 
kind of get more creative and, and step out of your your comfort zone to kind of like be a better artist a better uh musician on this album honestly i think like i mean at least my approach personally is like the more i make music the less um i try and think about it because it's sort of like how in therapy they tell you like not to think about your feelings like you're supposed to just like feel them yeah. you know what i mean and i think when i started letting go of like intellectualizing music i think i started to feel more um like artistically satisfied and like honestly i just enjoyed the process more and yeah. i think like if this is what we're going to be doing every day for the rest of our life it's like you have to enjoy the process of it and i think like i really i think i like gained a lot more confidence when i let go of intellectualizing music and stuff and like really just focusing on like every minute step of writing and producing a song is just like i like this or i don't like this yeah. and it's like don't think about why you just like literally follow your intuition every step of the way and like that's how i've personally like sp just speaking for myself got like my favorite songs mm -hmm. on the record is like just literally not thinking about it and just like following the intuition of um this lyric or or can we do better or this lyric do we really like this and it's like is this drum is this kick drum like it's like every little thing yeah. just following the yes or the no like switch in your brain and if you don't know if you're like totally stumped like that's where collaboration is like amazing yeah, true and also them bringing in you know like we said a spice that we just like isn't in our brain but then i can be like i actually really love that like let's roll with that you know what i mean and mm -hmm. so I don't know if I answered the question or not. You did, but that <laughs> <You> uh, did. <laughs> that's what came to my brain. <laughs> Alex, Kara, um, as far as like this experience, what did you feel that you learned about yourselves, um, especially with the skills that you have that all oh, that you came into thinking that you only had, and then you know you leave this this recording session knowing that there's so many more skills that you have acquired now. Um, I think Mike actually kind of nailed it on the head there uh trusting intuition mm -hmm. um i think maybe just speaking for myself like it's easy to be like unsure of yourself sometimes and easy to like second guess and easy to be like but is that the right thing to do is that the right yeah. part like does this serve the song will will everybody else like this idea you know and so um it's yeah, it's easy to like get in your head about that stuff. And I think this specific process, for some reason, we all were very, very open. We all were very like understanding and not like shooting ideas down at all. Not that we've ever done that, but I think we were all just very, I don't know. We just, you were being students again. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah kind of a lot of beginner's mind. For this yeah. Yeah. In a way, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Lots of beginner's mind on this record. And I think that's what makes it um, a little bit, more unique uh compared to other bodies of work that we've put out yeah i love the cadences that you guys give us with like the music the lyrics um and at the same time like i feel like that's also a challenge for you because i feel like you are constantly up here with your vocals yeah. um so what is that process like for you like do you think about this when you're writing the music or when you guys are creating the music before you start recording vocals? yeah um not so much until now like i used to not I mean, thankful to, to these guys. They've pushed me vocally a lot. Um, I, I think on maybe if you listen to our first record, it's very like um, I'm a little more lazy. I'm a little not lazy in a bad way, but like, you know, I'm very like kind of slurring. It's a little less pronunciation. It's a lot of doubles. It's a lot of like not like building a wall of sound versus this record is very like one voice talking to you kind yeah. of thing which um i definitely was a little bit nervous about but it's also yeah i don't know it's it's been challenging i think live is where it gets really challenging because these songs like <laughs> yeah. in the studio to tough. be honest a lot of these songs in the studio were like one takes or like we kept the demo because wow. there was like yeah. a magic we're big like in keeping the magic where it is and a lot of this ended up being demo vocal but live is where i think i've recently had to really figure it out because singing an hour and a half every night and all of this new stuff is like head voice like <laughs> at the top of my range so I, I have a vocal coach now and like have like doing a lot more um yeah just gym work on my voice because it's it i never knew how challenging it would be especially with touring so much and stuff but i'm grateful for it because i think i broke through a new like ceiling with this record mm -hmm. i feel like i can like there's stuff that like if i some of these songs if i were singing them like 
three years ago, I'd be like, there's no way I can sing this. Now it's like, oh, I can, I can do it. So um, it kind of gets me excited for the next thing we do because I feel like we'll constantly be pushing um, how far I can maybe take it. But, yeah. um, but I'm really grateful. This album, like, and mostly the collaborators we worked with too, like a lot of, like, like Jorgen and David and Pramik and um, just people we work with, they, they're really good at like um, centering us, especially when they work with us and like really getting the take right. Mm. Um, David's really good at like sitting you down. Like when we're doing the break for you vocals and like um, working at the A-frame house, like he's really good at like sitting um, you down and just being like, Hey, like I want you to think of this when you sing this line and like breathe here and like, sound a little like tired here sound really excited here like wow. he's really detailed. it's like vocal producing and it's like kind of like making the emotion of the song like reach your throat and your voice and the way <laughs> you say it like it's like there's a lot of like kind of that stuff behind um you know getting the right take but all in all yeah i'm just thankful like for the band and people around me that like pushed me to like take it further because i knew i knew i think i had the potential to take it a little further but mm. um it's it's hard like because you get so self-conscious about your voice too sometimes it's um yeah i'm just thankful i think this album like vocally helped a lot um just kind of explore new territory yeah yeah collectively <laughs> is there a certain song on this album that you guys felt super challenged or maybe almost didn't even make it because it was like giving you such a hard time uh, big, big jet playing <laughs> it's the second last song on the album and we we versions. we did 11 versions wow. maybe they'll all come out one day but yeah the sometimes songs you know as chris martin says from coldplay sometimes they follow the sky and sometimes you got to really work <laughs> for them and the ones yeah. that follow the sky are awesome um and such a gift but uh yeah that one was like we can't we couldn't figure out the verse forever the chorus we like kind of had and it just like was chaos <laughs> and and the whole journey of that is always so fun after the fact but in the middle of it it sucks because you're like yeah. can't figure this out it's really annoying you're hitting your head against the wall um and that's where yeah sometimes you kind of lose a little bit of perspective but we figured it out um but you guys still believed in the song so what was it about the song that, the, that yeah, it, was, it was the writing like the, it was the writing of the chorus that was like really and the first time we ever wrote it we were really excited about it. And then everyone we showed this like kind of mid demo to everyone was like, this is amazing. We we're like, yeah, there is something special about it. And it kind of hung around. It was one of the first songs we wrote for, for the cycle. Yeah. And it kind of hung around like in the back of our head throughout writing all these different singles and other songs that we love. And we were like, but this chorus has to make it. So we like wrote a verse and we were like, it's good, but like, it's still not as good as the chorus. You know what I mean? And then one day, like and we did that like 10 times. And then one day we just like wrote a verse that was like, was as good as the chorus. <laughs> and then we we're like, all right, the song's done. But then we like tried producing it. It's like the verses, you'll have to hear it when you listen to like the whole song, but the verse is so different than the chorus, but like for some reason it works. Yeah. And they're, they kind of live in different worlds. So then it was like, how do we match the production or at least make the production sound like it's transitioning to the right world? Like it was, it was just really hard, but we figured it out. So it's just insane because like you, you guys have this like way of hooking your audience into your songs into the tracks like the hooks are just insane oh, what is that process uh do those is that as you kind of mentioned earlier they just fall from the sky or is that like do you really actively work on how to make this hook the way that it is yeah i think the initial idea often comes like very quickly and then it's it's a lot of um like sculpting the melody we're really big on melody i think melody is like um melody is king because like even now, like we were, I was just having a conversation with my friend yesterday at a bar and we were just talking about AI and we were like, AI is getting crazy. Yeah. But the one thing that like AI can't really do yet is like melody and like <laughs> I, I, maybe they can now, but like melody is such a like spiritual, like emotional thing as much as lyrics are too. Yeah. But like a good melody, like I think like changes our world, like and like i think melody is also like uh, has no language barrier like melody is everything melody is heartbeat because it's like you don't need to know the lyrics to know the melody and i that that connects us on like a worldly level on a spiritual level so um yeah melody is like always been really important to us i think it's like finding finding kind of the arc and then kind of like 
tweaking it as we write lyrics and being like, okay, where can we like emotionally still hit a little harder? And, yeah. um, you know, how can we build it in a way that ha- it has like a journey and a story? So yeah, to answer your question, melody is in- insanely important. It's like nuts. What was the creative process for the current single, uh, Break For You? Oh man. Oh, it was fun. That was very fast. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> it was with Peter Fenn, David Pramick, Matthias the Fourth, and yeah, and how I I remember I was actually telling someone the other day like David had this idea, just the words "break for you," mm-hmm. and the first time he said it, everyone kind of like looked around the room. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we like didn't like it and then and then we were like let's try other things and then we like tried like five ideas and they were all like okay and then david was like i really think break for you is good and then we were like all right and and then i don't know something switched in my head where i was like i heard it in a different way because break for you could be corny but it could be like really great yeah and i think like we I, i just heard it in a different way i was like oh my god wait no this is actually super emotional and beautiful and then peter fenn like put down um the chord progression on like a synth and then we and then i I forget who did what like it was just like the energy in the room everyone's kind of like singing random things Mm -hmm. like pointing at each other like piecing it together like this is cool here this is cool here like and then the chorus just like came together like in 30 minutes like it was really crazy it was very infectious yeah Yeah. and just the four chords yeah yeah that's also just like I remember that looping for like hours, and that's just going like for the verse. How do we start this verse? And yeah. then and then I we within like the hour we got the I'll break, I'll break, I'll break, I'll break for you, and that's yeah. when you know you have something. There and were then, like five other versions yeah. of that. I remember that yeah. was the thing we were stuck but on. That was the we finally mined the like perfect one. But that's an example. It's just of, a yeah, good like day. The initial idea came very quickly, and then it's just like refining. When you know you mm-hmm. have something, it's just refining. It's having conversations about what we're writing about. Um, you know, we were talking about long-term relationships and and kind of the hardships you go through with that whole situation. It's just you know, it's like one big, one just, big therapy session mixed with yeah. like a bunch of production nerds just like laying <laughs> drums down and stuff. It's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, but. it's it's like it, it's just crazy like how there's no song that you guys have created that isn't catchy Um, (laughs) and i feel like that's such a challenge in itself um for me um like one of my favorites so far is uh i ain't crying no i ain't crying throw Throw back to yours over here like that whole like up and down cadence that you kind of give me through it like Uh, that was beautiful like i'll listen to that over and over and like not get tired of the song like oh thanks how different was the process for that one compared to like the other songs that you guys have created for this album? That one was like kind of started as a complete joke. We were at our manager's <laughs> house and the ones you never try are the ones. That it was like... literally a complete joke. We were, and that was just like old, old friends of ours. Like Matthias IV, who we wrote a lot of this record with, he's, we went to college with him. Like we've known him mm-hmm. forever. Um, this guy named John, uh, we've known forever. And Andrew, it's like, you know, that was just like us hanging out at our manager's house and we didn't really do anything for hours. We were like just bored as <laughs> and like nothing was working. And then we ended up going for a walk and then came home again. And then I, I happened to get like a text from like an old, old, like, like ex-girlfriend, um, just kind of like checking in and stuff. And then we were just kind of like laughing and joking about like just kind of people from your past, like yeah. resurfacing um, <laughs> that haven't talked to you in forever. And then we just kind of like very jokingly like i think with tice just laying on the couch he's like wait throwback tears is a cool <laughs> title and then from there you know again it's just like okay we have this title throwback tears and then mike pulled up this like really cool uh piano sound and then i just laid down like a chord progression and then john came in with this crazy break beat and like it all just happens once once everyone like catches the wave yeah. you just gotta ride it That's like you just ride it and you have to do everything in your power to not get in the way of it yeah. of it just happening and yeah and then the song kind of writes itself you kind of just start throwing out lines we were joking just like i don't know that whole song is kind of like very jokey like <laughs> i mean the second verse literally has a line it's like let's get acoustic now like yeah like we kind of break the fourth like third wall or whatever in that song too it's just like us having fun and being a little cheeky a little sassy 
Um, and it just felt very fresh for us at the time. You know, it's the first lines like I'm on some new shit now. Like we yeah. just wanted to really like come back kind of strong and, and also a little funny. I love that. I yeah. love that. I love the wave that you're taking me in on this, on these songs so far. Like I yeah. can't wait for this album to drop, but guys, thank uh, you so much for hanging out with so me. Thank you so much. You guys be sure to check out yeah. Valley. Lost in Translation is Woo. out June 23rd, right? Hell yeah, June 23rd. And, uh, thanks for watching our front row live. Thanks so much, Rob. Nice. Appreciate you. <laughs>